power of the system we live in is to make people believe things that are so ridiculous on the face of it, but they've been told it over and over and over since the day they were born that they can't question it anymore. Many of the things, like the sun is a good example. For someone to say the sun's a hell of a lot closer to us than 93 million miles, the average person's going to roll their eyes. This is the system protecting itself in the lie that we have been constructed into. A lot of people will go at this and say, well, why did we get lied to? Well, you can think of basic reasons, like to deny someone the knowledge of knowing where they exist, that deprives a human being of almost everything. To not even understand where you exist denies you really much ability to know where you're gonna go, where you've come from, the things that are even possible in this place because you don't even know what this place is. You're saying that after a big bang, even with the law of thermodynamics called entropy, which we'll get to in a second, somehow our galaxy ended up being a perfectly flat plane not just is the solar system a flat plane, the entire Milky Way galaxy is a flat plane where all the planets spin in the same direction. The odds of that are less than winning the mega lotto every single day for thousands of years. Now look at the moon. The moon is a perfect circle. The odds that that happened after Big Bang and just chaos of atoms and particles and dust and rocks colliding is zero. The odds are literally zero. There's no force, there's no wind, there's no erosion, there's no water, there's no force acting upon that moon that would make it a perfect sphere. The odds that the spin of the moon is exactly the same speed as it rotates around the Earth, again, are zero. If it was one quarter of one mile per hour different, it would slowly turn. And there is zero physics explanations with the model of gravity as we know it to explain why its axis rotation is exactly matching it rotate around us so that we only see one side. Light being shined upon a sphere does not make the luminescence the same all the way across. You can do a test with a tennis ball and a flashlight. It's impossible, it can't happen. It only happens on two dimensional objects. Seeing as you've only seen one side of the moon because of its miraculous rotation and its perfect circle, and the fact that the luminescence is the same across the whole thing implies, I'm not stating this, it implies it's a two-dimensional object, okay? The size and weight of the moon, according to science, it is impossible for it to be rotating around our Earth. The way the moon was created according to mainstream science is that an object the size of Mars hit Earth and created the moon. That's nonsense. We would have rings like Saturn. Where's all the dust? Where's all the debris? Where's everything? That all just disappeared that makes no sense at all next up the Sun is 400 times bigger and miraculously 400 times farther away than the moon and like two machine cut quarters they line up perfectly to make an eclipse the odds of that are one in trillions times one in trillions times one in trillions it's not possible that the perfect circles in this world line up perfectly with something 400 times larger from a third factor, which is your fixed position on an Earth that they claim is spinning 1,000 miles an hour. The shadow of the eclipse is 70 miles wide. There is no way to make a shadow smaller than the object. Of course, there are people that say umbra because like goats, they've been trained to say that, but they cannot recreate an umbra on Earth. They only believe it because they've been indoctrinated to believe it since the time of their birth by people who want to remove their connection to God. Science is a bit of a religion now. When you come into a scientific group and you challenge NASA, they're not going to talk to you. They're just going to call you a silly man and ignore everything you say. Well, you see, this is the programming of science doing this. Science should be dictating that anything we can question should be questioned. And yet this is not what we see. The law of entropy is that matter and energy naturally go from order to chaos. If you break a glass, even after a billion years, the broken shards will not reform into the glass because objects have a tendency towards entropy, towards dissolving, towards breaking apart. So how do we have a human eyeball from a Big Bang? The Big Bang happens and it creates a never-ending waterfall, cascade, domino effect of atoms smashing against each other in an empty darkness for eternity. So given the law of entropy that things go from order to chaos, how on earth do we have the structure of a human eyeball in which we can see light and then recreate the light in our minds as images that represent our physical reality? It contradicts to a point of laughable mockery.